As many of you know, I'm currently walking and painting my way around the entire coast of Scotland. And in doing so, I'm realizing that I need to make some changes to my palette. I'm the kind of artist who chooses colors and then sticks with those colors for a really long time. This allows me to really get to know my palette and it kind of becomes second nature when it comes to mixing. So I'm going to be giving this new palette a three to six month trial period. And in that time, really test it out while I'm painting outside on the coast. And as we go, I'd love to hear about your experiences with different colors, what your favorites are, or if you think I'm missing a color that I absolutely should have. Unlike in the past when I only stuck with colors that are extremely light fast and non-toxic, this time around I'm going for colors that fascinate me and excite me. Because even though I'm super inspired out there, when I'm hiking mile after mile with 20 pounds of gear on my back and utterly drained, I need as much motivation as possible to sit down and paint. So in this palette I do have some workhorse, classic, no fuss colors, but I've also added some quirky colors that get me super excited to pick up my brush. Okay, enough of this intro, let's get to the colors. And now for the moment everyone has been waiting for. Oh, well, maybe not, but here we go anyway. My palette has 18 wells, so I have 18 colors, but a few of them are custom mixes, which I will talk about as we go. Black is an incredibly useful mixing color. I rarely use it on its own, but I like to use it for mixing grayish blues and greens. With just a touch of any yellow, you can mix some gorgeous earthy olive greens. And there are tons of different types of black pigments out there. I chose lamp black because it seemed like it had the perfect neutral tone and in its mass tone it gets extremely dark and it doesn't lighten too much when it dries. Next up we have my version of indigo and this is one of the colors that is very new to me. Someone gifted me this color actually and I fell head over heels. Sodalite Genuine is one of the Daniel Smith Primatech colors and is very heavily granulating. I love the texture it has, especially on cold press or rougher paper, and I find it really useful for mixing into shadow colors or using it in the really deep parts of a water, like ocean or shoreline colors. Next is one of my all-time favorite blues, Anthraquinone Blue. This is a very deep, rich blue. In its mass tone, it can almost look completely black, but you can easily dilute it and make it a really versatile blue for so many different things. I accidentally wrote PB29, but this pigment is actually PB60, and it's a very dark, slightly dull, kind of violet blue. However, to my eye, it definitely appears way more blue than anything else. And similar to Sodalite Genuine, I typically use it for mixing into shadow tones and the deep parts of water, but it can also mix some really beautiful purples and greens. Ultramarine Finest, or PB29, is probably the blue I use most often. It's a little bit lighter than Anthraquinone Blue, but it still gives you a really rich, deep blue color. When you dilute it just a little bit, it is great for skies and water reflections, but I also love using it in shadows, especially when mixed with Potter's Pink because you get a really beautiful kind of muted purple and it's very granulating. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> I would say ultramarine is like a middle of the road blue and if I could only have one blue on my palette it would be this. Next up is Helio Turquoise which is kind of a phthalo greenish color but it still leans much more towards blue. And because it's a phthalo it means it's incredibly vivid, it can really easily overpower any mix. So I tend to use it sparingly, but I really love it, especially for coastal scenes. And if you mix a little bit of this with ultramarine, you can get the most perfect sky blue color. 
Sometimes when I'm feeling particularly adventurous, I will use this as my main mixing blue because look at these gorgeous coastal colors. Let's move on to the greens. The first one is phthalo green, and this color is incredibly intense. Once again, I typically use it for mixing and I only need a tiny bit. I really love this color for making rich purples and grays, but most often I'm using it for a bit of sunlight in a wave or just a tiny splash of color on the shoreline or in some foliage. Diopside Genuine from the Daniel Smith Primatec line remains as one of my favorite greens. It's a perfect middle ground green and can easily be warmed up or cooled down depending on what you mix with it. It's very heavily granulating, which is one of the things I love about it, and I find it's great for mixing really beautiful natural looking greens. Next up is a new color for me, which is called Undersea Green. And this one is very muddy and earthy. When you hear muddy colors, you might want to run in the other direction, but honestly, this is such a beautiful color, especially for coastal scenes. I've been splashing this into my shorelines and getting some really cool results. I also find that it mixes gorgeously with phthalo colors. Because they're so intense, when you add them to this very dull, earthy green, you get a gorgeous middle ground. And because it has a bit of granulation, the final result is not quite duotone, but it has a lot of visual interest. Next is one of my custom greens, and this one is a very deep turquoise. I used anthraquinone blue and diopside genuine. So because of the diopside genuine, I get some granulation and the color leans more towards blue. It's such a gorgeous color for coastal scenes. Perhaps surprisingly, I also found that when I mix a little bit of quinacridone magenta into this, or even potter's pink, I can make some absolutely gorgeous purples. And to be honest, this is my favorite color on my palette. Next is another new color. This is the Schmincke Super Granulating Shire Blue. I did a video about the Shire set if you want to watch that, but this one is my favorite out of all of them. It does contain a cobalt, so if you're leaning towards an environmentally friendly palette, you want to avoid this color. However, I find that this color alone sometimes inspires me to pick up my palette. I think it's really important that your colors inspire you and get you excited to paint. So this one may not live permanently on my palette, but I am enjoying it for the time being. However, I have noticed strangely that the super granulating colors tend to go quickly, meaning it doesn't seem like I use that much of it, but all of a sudden the tube is gone. So I recommend finding them on sale because they are a bit pricey. It's a bluish green, heavily granulating, and has a duotone effect when it dries, which is probably what makes it so exciting. Next is another custom color. This one is my only violet on my palette. I find violet to be the easiest color to mix on the go, so I only reserve one spot for this on my palette. It's a mixture of my quinacridone magenta and ultramarine with a tiny bit of phthalo green mixed in, which may sound strange, but I find that it adds a bit of intensity and interest. And in the mass tone, it leans more towards blue, but in the more diluted areas, it leans more towards pink. So it's a really fun mix. Next up is quinacridone magenta. And this color has been my main mixing red for a really long time. It's just a very versatile color. You can add a tiny bit of yellow and get a very intense red color. And it's really easy to mix browns and oranges and purples and even some greens with this color. And one of the best parts is that it's permanent. It's light fast. So if you really like those bright pinks like opera rose, but you're worried about the light fastness, you can take it down a notch and use quinacridone magenta. It's still gonna give you that really vibrant pink tone and it's resistant to fading. Next up is Potter's Pink, which I use for mixing into every color on my palette, especially when I want just a touch of granulation or to mute a color because this is a very dull pinkish red tone. 
I find it especially useful for mixing sand textures and rock colors because even straight out of the tube, it mimics how those textures look. So with a hint of yellow or red or green, I can make such a huge variety of earthy tones. Now here's another color that I quickly fell in love with for mixing. And usually I steer away from cadmium reds because I find that they just give me more dull mixes. But the more I paint on the coast, the more I find this is actually a really useful color. It's a bit more transparent and very heavily granulating. So I typically only use this for mixing into sandy tones, rock tones, muting my greens, but it will also sometimes come in handy for man-made things like stoplights or house colors or car colors and stuff like that. But because it's a cadmium, it probably won't live permanently on my palette, but it's been really useful for my coastal journey so far. Next up is Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which has been on my palette for as long as I can remember. It's a very intense reddish orange color, but I find it's really useful for muting my greens, for making sandy, earthy, rocky tones, and in a situation where I'm painting waves that are washing up onto the shore, a bit of this mixed with my Potter's Pink gives me the perfect disturbed sand color, <laughs> meaning the waves are splashing around and, and the sand is swirling around in the water. So just a touch of that or even a splash into the wet wave is a really good solution. For years, I was obsessed with yellow ochre, and I still find it to be an incredibly beautiful and useful color. However, the more I paint my coastal scenes, the more I like to glaze, especially on the rocks. So opaque colors aren't really doing it for me right now. I did a bunch of research and found that there's a transparent ochre, which gives me a little bit more of a brownish ochre tone, but I can also use it as a mixing color when I want to mute my colors. So I'm really enjoying this transparent version so far. Speaking of yellows, here we go with another new one. This is more of a golden yellow. It's called New Gamboge, and I'm finding this to be a gorgeous mixing yellow. When it's diluted, it leans more towards like a very soft yellow ochre. So it's already become one of my favorites for mixing sandy, rocky tones, but I can also make some incredibly beautiful greens and even splash this into some waves and get a bit of sunlight or glitter effect. And there were so many times when I was out painting on the coast that I just wished I had what I thought in my mind of as like a sunshine yellow. And this is definitely that color. For my cooler yellow, I'm sticking with vanadium yellow because I find that the opacity, even though I like to glaze my mixes, it offers a really high tinting strength. So I only need a tiny bit of this in my mixes. It lasts a really long time. And you can see here when it's diluted, it's a very soft, gentle yellow. A little bit of this mixed with my Helio Turquoise gives me a super intense and almost neon green, but I can also add some black to it and make it more of an earthy green. So it's still a very versatile yellow. In the past, when I've shared my swatching videos and explaining what colors I use, I get so many questions about how I choose my colors and how I do all the research, especially for those who are interested in non-toxic palettes or light fast ratings. I highly recommend that you use a couple of these websites I'm showing you here. These are databases of almost every pigment you could ever want, and there's so much information packed in. And since all of us are so unique and have very specific requirements when it comes to painting, including whether or not you sell originals or you simply scan and make prints of your work, it's going to vary so much person to person, which is why I think it's really good to get into the habit of doing your own research and making informed decisions. I can answer some questions, but I'm definitely not an expert. My Patreons have access to a high-res scan of all of these colors and a bonus 20-minute video explaining why I made all these changes and much more about my color choice processes and how I use them in my painting process. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you're all staying inspired. I'm doing my best too, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.